there are more positions at ST1 level than as compared to the ST3. I can give you an example, like last year, when they appoint for the cardio thrusts, so they have around eight to 10 ST1 positions. And at the level of ST3, there were only three to four positions. This year, ST3, there will only be two positions and around 12 positions for ST1. And then from the next year, there will be no more ST3 cardiothoracic training positions. There will be only ST1 training positions there. Okay. So it's a general advice for all of you because I'm in cardiothoracic, so I know more about the cardiothoracic. I can guide you about it. But whatever field you want to choose, it's better to speak to someone who is currently working as a trainee in that field. So they can tell you the in and out of the applying for the training program there. Um, this is just the start. The other thing uh, that I saw in the question is how you can apply for the GNC registration. As we all know, there are a few routes. Uh, like nowadays, there's a program which is running um, with the collaboration with the CPSP, which is called MTI program. MTI program is a very good program. It's good in a sense that you don't need to give flat to, and then you can come direct on job. Okay. It is good if you want to spend only a couple of years here and have the experience and you want to go back. But there are few drawbacks to this program. The first drawback is that I recently find out and initially I was involved in this program, uh, but because of this thing that I find out, I just say bye-bye to them. Uh, what happened that the people who came here for the MPI program, they have been told something else. And when they came here, they working on different positions, which is basically what I could say a position less than what they were expected and what they were told. The other thing is, there is no flexibility with the MTI program. You will come here, you spend two years, and then you have to go back. In case if you come here and after two years you want to stay, then you can't. You need to find out a job, you need to go back, apply for the visa, and then they come back. But the issue is the two years that you already spent here, they are not going to count towards your residency or towards your passport. Okay. The other way to come is basically go for the PLAB route. I think PLAB route is not a difficult, especially if you already plan in your medical school that you want to come to the UK, then PLAB itself is not as such difficult. In the PLAB one, what they usually ask is, what do you study in your final year? So if anybody planning to give PLAB. So what is PLAB? PLAB is like a licensing exam, okay? Even if somebody who's been, uh, did the, what is called, um, if somebody have, have done their medical school outside the Pakistan, even if they come, when they come back, they have to clear the exam in Pakistan as well, okay? So it's same like in US when you go, you have to give the US ML, okay? PLAB so it's itself. Like, it's yeah. like US ML for the UK? Like no. USMLEs we give for USA, so PLAB we give for UK? Yes, it's correct. Okay. But uh, the USMLE has a bit different background, and yes. the PLAB has got a different background. Okay. As far as I know, the PLAB 1 is basically the MCQs based, and most of the questions that they ask is around the medicine, field, surgery, all the subjects that we usually study in our final year, except one, which is psychiatry. Okay, if you are doing it in your final year, it will be good, it will help you a lot. Okay, this is lab one. Lab two is, is basically there are different stations that you have to go through, and the stations they are very easy. Like, uh, you have to examine a patient who came with the knee pain or might be pain in the abdomen, and then you have to come to the differential diagnosis and discuss with them. Some stations are practical stations where you have to take the bloods. So a dummy will be there, and then you have to take the blood there. 
and like also there is a station where they will ask you how you doing the downing and gloving as well flap 2 itself is very easy the passing ratio most of the time is about 90% there are few centers in uh, east ham area of london where you will come they run a course for around 10 days to 14 days and they will tell you all the tricks that you need to know to clear this this flap 2 okay so flap 2 itself is very easy but i will definitely recommend you when you come here you need to do the test uh, sorry take take this course the well known course is called swami is s w a m y they are based in east end area of london okay with the flap you have got the flexibility that when you come here so whatever work you will do this will count towards your residence okay another thing is with the mpi program when you come for the to the mpi program so the visa that you got you got it for a particular hospital and you are bound to work only for that hospital okay if you come here for any reason you don't like the hospital you don't like their program you don't like the faculty but you are bound for two years okay you can't change that hospital but if you are applying for the job here after clearing your flap then you have the multiple choices there okay you can apply anywhere any hospital that you like okay for some reason if you start one post it might be a non training post and in the middle if you get a training position then you can leave this position and you can switch towards the training position as well okay so there are plus minus points for applying to both of the routes but uh, sir for, what you said before uh, in what case we don't have an option for either hospitals when you come to the mpi program okay so the visa that has been issued for you it is an issued by a particular trust okay so you are okay, bound sir. to work only for that hospital okay you don't have the flexibility to switch the job to another hospital okay sir okay but if you got your if you come through the uh, this lab route and if you clear uh, you have your your gmc registration then after that when you apply for the job and the visa that you will get you are flexible on that visa okay what you can do you can apply for a job suppose you apply for the training position first time god forbid you haven't got it and what you can do you can apply for the non training position for the main time okay and then you carry on with the non training position and once you got the training position then you can easily switch from this position to another position there okay or if you are working in a hospital in the few months time you find out another job that you are more interested in then you can switch to hospital as well easily there shouldn't be a problem so sir i want to know which which is better it is is it better to go for directly for the training job or to go for the non training job first and then apply for the training job after getting 6 7 months of experience and letter of recommendation from your non training job okay. the thing is to get the training position in uk is not an easy job okay um, it is unlikely that you will come and you will get the training position directly okay um you need to be very very realistic and the field that you want to apply to is better to keep an eye that how many positions they release every year okay here in most of the field the selection is national selection where all the people apply throughout the country at one place okay like as i told you in cardiac the last year one only four position in whole of the country okay and this year is only sure. going to be two two stc positions right so you can imagine the level of the competency there that you need okay to get these positions here okay so you need to be very very realistic and i'm telling you the truth that the reason the most of the colleague who came with me about 10 years ago 95 or more than 95% of the people they ended up in changing their field and to go in some other field like gp so why why is it the case like for example like why people are going for if i am willing to go for the internal medicine or general surgery 
So, like, hmm. why to go for GP? Like, is it they do they have more vacancies for the GP program than internal medicine or surgery program? Uh, is it who's asking this question? Ramesha Raza. Ramesha Raza. Okay. The thing, thing, thing is that it depends here in simple words, demand and supply. Okay. okay. Here they will see like internal medicine. A lot of people apply for the internal medicine. General surgery. A lot of people apply for the general surgery. Okay. But there are less people who apply for the psychiatry. Right. Okay? Sir. You can easily get 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 training position in psychiatry. Okay. Yes, sir. Peace. is relatively easy here interventional radiology is relatively easy here okay right. so there are few that people don't want to apply okay there are reason behind it here the salary that you will get as a consultant it will be same regardless in which specialty you are working okay either is it medicine either is it medicine yeah. or surgery both both yeah if you are working okay. you are you came as a radiologist sit sit in a air condition room okay for 5 hours you sign the report go home you will get the same salary if you working as a cardiac surgeon who working might be 12 hour in theater he is on call he went home one hour he come back later and then he was operating overnight and then the next day he is also operating as well but in the end right. he will get the same salary as well right okay so people here they choose the field because of different reason as well okay they choose mainly because of the lifestyle okay right they will see how they can manage their life their family life as well which is more easier okay because in right. the end the salary that you're getting is the same okay right. so the field that have got involved uh, i will say less work these are the ones that getting filled very very easily right sir okay internal medicine right. you have got even if you're on call so it's hardly that you have to come from home for what okay okay but if you are in general surgery it's hardly that you will stay at home you have to be here okay appendix right. acute abdomen obstruction right and, and anything come up at night time okay, okay. and you most of the time you ended up in bed Okay, sir. Okay, so for any field that you want to apply, it's better that you go and check their website. Okay. GMC. Like in, GMC is the registration body. Okay, okay. Okay. So you have to go for like, FRCP, our uh, the Royal Colleges of Physicians website to check. So what's yes, the case? Yes, you're right. Okay. Like we have PMC, Pakistan Medical Council, which is only a right. registering body. So GMC is like the same. Right, okay. sir. And like we have CPSP here, they have got the same Royal Colleges. Mm -hmm. On their website, you will find out that how many positions was last year. Okay. Right, sir. And what was the applicant ratio as well? You will find. Right, sir. Okay. To be very honest, if you come in from outside and you find for a field that have applicant ratio of twenty five is to one. Right. Okay, and you apply for a field where the applicant ratio is four is to one. Then it's obvious the chances are more to get where the options are four is to one, where only four people applying for one position, as compared to the post where twenty five people are applying for one position. Right. Okay, and if I'm honest to you, very very honest, right. the thing yes. is that even they say equal opportunity. Okay. It's not going but to be. There is, but there is no equal opportunity in any part of the world. any part Definitely of it not okay if you have got same qualification but if somebody is coming from uk graduate school okay especially with the british right. background they will get the job okay right. that's bottom line that's reality and you will find out when you will be here so whatever right. people say no don't nothing. believe over no. them no reality is different reality is different okay so that's the reason when you will come here you need to be realistic right sir okay so choose the field accordingly okay and make sure you choose the field that is realistic and you will find out speak to the people that is anyone who got the job in this field or not right sir okay so this will give you an idea that how easily you can enter into the program okay, okay?
like if somebody coming in certain size then orthopedic is usually a good option okay so they are question. are you from british background obviously you are not i think so so is that easy for you to get a job to be very honest it was not very easy to get the job okay when i came to this country the visa that i got okay. there is a restriction on the visa not for doctor in training okay, okay. so i have to wait for 5 years oh when i much. when i got my when i got my passport and then when i applied then i have been told you are over age now okay oh. so then i have to spend 2 years to do a research degree as an md program okay and during those seven years i did hundred of other things as well okay you did what uh, i did hundred of other things as well okay oh. to make myself more competent than anyone else okay, okay. and i went okay. when i went for this job for this st3 application so my score was the highest among all the others okay so what the reason will be if in the end if the time allow then i will show you my cv and then you have an idea what sort of things you need to do to become that competent um dr azhar yes. will you please elaborate on um the caesar pathway caesar process yes yeah okay basically the caesar process is uh, for someone who is coming at a senior level like my being here if you are planning to come in okay for you if you coming when you already have done the training in pakistan then i don't recommend you to join the training program there yeah okay the reason being because you already been trained you don't need to be trained the only thing you need to do when you come here is to work in a hospital where you know that people train you okay yes. because in surgery in 90% of the hospital you will go and you will not be trained this is a common scenario here okay mm -hmm. so before coming you need to do your work up okay and uh, once you join the hospital then you have to work there for a year or two you need to show your competency that you are competent enough okay mm -hmm. to become a consultant here once you show this to the department then what you need you need the three consultant on your side that are ready to sign mm -hmm. you off okay so once you have these three references from the consultant that they are ready for you to apply to the gmc mm -hmm. then you need to do an application to the gmc and uh, the gmc they will ask for all the evidence that you have or whatever you have done since you clear your mbb and then they will assess your application and after that they will decide that the qualification that you have or that you have done is equivalent to the one that is got trained here okay once they satisfy that you got the same level of competency then they will register you on the specialist register once your name is on the specialist register then you will awarded a certificate which is called caesar okay caesar is an equivalent to the certificate that the trainee receives at the end of their training which is called ccct certificate of completion of training uh, sir uh, what things we can do uh, during our mbbs to make our cv or resume competent than a, a untrained right um, what i can do if you guys are okay then i can show you the matrix Uh, that somebody required want to apply for the cardio thrust is it okay yeah sure yeah okay assalam alaikum sir i am uh, my name is sir i am a third year medical student from united medical and dental college sir i have a confusion between pleb and mrcp sir pleb is enough or should i take mrcp too after my graduation 
Please uh, explain it. Please explain MRCP. Yeah, just one, one second. I will answer you in a moment. Uh, for some reason, I'm not allowed to share my screen. So, in a, sir, you to... can guide. Uh, sir, you can guide us. Uh, that. Without the CV as well. No, I'm not sharing the CV. I'm just sharing the matrix of the ST3. Okay. So for you guys to have an idea about it. Sir, there are permissions from my side. I don't know why it is not working. Uh, I just uh, share a document with Hina on WhatsApp. So can she share it? Is Hina there? I guess she's not here. Yes, okay. Then, then, okay, then leave it. Okay, so the main, the first question was the, um, it was asked uh, that if you are in, doing an MBBS, so what you can do? So when you will be here, so then you will be ready uh, to apply for the trading position. Okay, here, every Royal College will issue you a document which is called matrix. Matrix is when you apply for any training position, then there are certain things that you can apply and you can get scored for that. Okay. Like, for example, when you apply for the training position, then there are some points for the presentations. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you see this screen? Yes, sir. Y yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Like you can see it here. Uh, this is the ST3 shortest criteria for cardio processing. Okay. So even before to shortlist for the training position, you need to score certain points on your application. Okay. How you score is is different in each specialty. Okay. And at what level you are applying. So you need to see which specialty you want to apply and you need to find out the matrix for that specialty, which is very easy, just Google it and you will find out. So I will go through this one, which is the cardiothoracic one, right? It shows you that we have MBBS degree. So the MBBS degree, it will give you only one point on this matrix. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt. Uh, the meeting will be ended in one minute. You, you all can join using the same link again. Sorry for again. Okay, so I think it's better if I leave now and then join at this time. Sure, sir. The, this is a question that they're going to ask is uh, in your uh, all the uh, interviews is the difference between the audit and research. Okay. Uh, anybody want to answer this? No one? Okay, so basically the audit is, if you are checking your practice and if you are comparing it with some standard, okay? For example, you will say the infection rate after cardiac surgery as an international level is around three to five percent, okay? And if you're trying to find out what is your infection rate in your hospital, okay? So when you run this, this is called audit. When you're comparing your practice with some already set standards, okay? Right, this is called audit. What the research is, if you're trying to find out some new information, okay? For example, if we say that besides using whatever you are using to prep the skin, if you use ioband on the top of it, okay, will it reduce the infection? So at the moment, we don't know the answer. We have to run a study 
to find out the answer. And when we find out the answer, this will be a new information. So any study in the end, when they're able to find out some new information, that will become research. Okay, so this is the difference between the audit and the research. The audit you can do at any stage, okay? And it's always a good practice to start developing these skills, audit, research, presentations, skills as soon as possible, okay? So even if you're a first year, second year medical student, I will definitely recommend you to present it at this level. Asalaamu As Alaikum, sir. <clears throat> Uh, sir, I'm Dr. Mustafa, and uh, I'm a resident, uh, senior resident at Cardiothoracic Surgery at uh, Aga Khan Hospital, Karachi. And uh, I think I met you in the conference as well uh, last time that you visited. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm sorry. My question. I think that we have students here, but uh, um, my question is a bit on a, a higher level. Uh, I want to ask about uh, Cardiothoracic Surgery uh, Fellowship in the England. Uh, I have some uh, uh, questions regarding that. So my first confusion about uh, the cardiothoracic surgery fellowship is that whenever I go to the website and I search for the cardiothoracic surgery fellowship in England, so what I get is that uh, they, they, there are multiple jobs. They, they show me multiple hospitals where jobs are available. So they call it a registrar, some call it SPR, and I have a friend there who tells me that who has who is also doing a registrar job in the in the surgery, and he tells me that there is no such proper fellowship in England. This is all like you know, this is all like you have to do a work of a clerkship in the the ward and and stuff like that. They will give you some sort of good pay, you will have a good life, but this is not a proper fellowship training, and like one should not opt for the for for uh, for cardiothoracic surgery uh, fellowship in England. Uh, especially if you are from Pakistan or from uh, other countries. So how you uh, sir, explain that? Uh, what's your name again? Mustafa. Mustafa. Yeah. Mustafa, I, I, I think uh, what I will do in the end, I will share my number with you all. Okay. So it is better that if we have this chat as a separate. Okay. Because we have juniors here and I don't want to demotivate the juniors. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So what I will do, I will have a chat with you separate and uh, I will refer you to a forum where, inshallah, you will find out a definite fellowship, a proper fellowship. Thank you, sir. Okay, no problem. So uh, just remind me in the end, I will share my number and then you can contact me separate. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Okay. Um, hi. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Uh, sir, could you elaborate on the scoring system? Sorry. Uh, Sorry, I, I, can't, I can't hear you for some reason. a separate degree while uh, being undergraduate and they have uh, separate scoring. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I can't hear you for some reason. Uh, I can open the chat and you can write your question here. Is that okay? Yes, sir. He's written a question over there. He's saying, can you elaborate on the IMT scoring system? IMT is internal medicine, is it? Internal medicine. Okay, fine. Uh, to be very honest, uh, I discussed this with Hina before as well, uh, that my specialty is started for six surgery, and I know in and out about it. Okay. So I can talk in general about it, which I already did when I was uh, telling you the metrics about the cardiothoracic surgery, uh, but I don't know exactly about the IMT scoring system, okay? Uh, you can easily find out, <clears throat> you can Google it and you can easily find out about it, okay? Uh, but I'm sure that every training system 
they all need presentations at international international levels, audit, research, presentations. They, they have all roughly the same scoring systems. Okay, but you need to find out about your field. You need to Google it and you need to find out. Like I showed you about the card classic. Unfortunately, the document was not open fully, uh, but I can uh, share uh, in the end with you guys about that document. No, sir. Uh, Kritlan here. Uh, initially, you mentioned like a few fields that were easier to get into. So mm. can you please elaborate on neurology if that's an easier field to get into in UK? Uh, again, the same, same answer. <clears throat> I don't know the exact number in neurology. Okay. But when you go towards more subspeciality, okay, it's always difficult. Okay. As far as I know, to go into internal medicine is easier than to go into any other subspecialty like cardiology, neurology, renal, anything. Sir, okay. I have a question. Uh, sir, I have a question. Like, if we do FLAB and then we do internal medicine residency training job from UK as well, and then we apply for the fellowship training job or for the specialty training job into cardiology or neurology, any competitive field, so is it easier to get through this way or just directly applying to the uh, specialty training job uh, after clearing, right after clearing the MRC without going through the internal medicine residency training job in UK? Right. Uh, what I would suggest to you, if you are coming just after your MBBS, then always aim for the training positions. Okay. The, here in the UK, the system is divided into three levels. Okay. One is the junior level, which is called SHO, it's called senior house officer level. Okay. Which include all the foundation doctors and all the core training doctors. Then the second level is, which is middle level, is called registrar level. All the level below consultant, they are called registrar level. And the third one is, is the consultant level. All of us, our main aim is to become the consultant at the end. Okay? If at the very early stage you apply for the training position, then it's easier to get the training position than to apply at the higher level. And once you get the training position, then at the end, it is nearly guaranteed, nearly guaranteed that you will get the consultant position. Okay. If you come through the other route, which might be that you will enter into the training in the middle or whether you have done this or whether you've done the fellowship and then you apply for the Caesar in the end, you get the Caesar in the end as well. But if you are going for the same position, okay, and one applicant is have done the CCT here, and the other applicant is coming to the Caesar route. Then 99%, the person who did the CCT or the full training in the UK, they will get the job. Okay, so if you want a bit more secure future, first of all, come early, apply early in the stage, and also aim for the training position from the very start. Okay, sir, thank you. Um, One more thing is an advice for everyone. Here in the last couple of years, the UK government, they basically invest billions and billions in research. Okay, They always look for the people who can involve or who are interested in research positions. Okay. If while doing your medical school, if you develop your research portfolio and when you will come here and when you will apply for the training position, then your chances will become much more higher, much more higher than if you come without any, any research background. Okay? They are desperately looking for the people who can take over these research positions. Okay? These are also the same, these are the training positions as well. But decide to spend 100% time of, of yours in clinical side, you will spend 50% clinical time and your 50% time will dedicate it to the research. But in the end, it will be much more benefited than just to the clinical route here. 
Um, so just a question. How has Corona affected the training uh, positions or the training there in UK? Training affected uh, as such. I can give you the example of cardiac surgery that uh, basically, as you know, when you're in surgery, so usually when you're in training position, they try to give you more elective type of cases. Okay? During the COVID, the elective surgery was stopped all over the board. And the only cases that we were doing were, they were the emergency patients. Okay? So that reduced the training, but I would say it only reduced to 20 to 30%, not more than that. And has that affected um, IMGs coming there to UK for jobs? They become much more flexible in this era for the IMG to come in. Okay. They previously the visa for the visa purpose, there are only a few fields that were on the priority list. Okay. But nowadays each and every field is on the priority list. Okay? If you got a job, if you applied it here, then your visa will be processed on the fast track. So if somebody is planning to come in, this is a good time to come in as well. Um, um, so uh, just to follow yeah. up on Dr. Hena's uh, query regarding COVID. Um, the situation right now is also not that good, uh, looking that good for people who are um, willing to take their plans because they're not finding dates, right? So that has severely impacted, um, I think, the duration. So what time would you recommend them to apply? Like for someone who is doing their house job, for instance, at, that, at this stage, um, how do they apply for it? Because right now, when you're looking for any kind of seats, um, I think they're like closed. So... Um, that, that's a query that I wanted to address. And also, could you just give a general guidance to all of the undergrads there regarding how to go about uh, giving your labs just after you graduate? Like, give us, a, like, could you, can you break us, a, like, a route, like, to all of us so that we all know uh, what to do, how to apply? Like, start it from the scratch. Okay. The you need to find out uh, on the website that where the slots are available and uh, mm -hmm. where you can go easily. Okay, so I will leave this to you. Regarding the preparation, okay, everybody have a different scenario and mm -hmm. you know yourself better than other. Okay, so if I give you the plan that I followed, this might not be the suitable for you. Okay, mm -hmm. till the time when I started the house job, okay, I never thought about coming to the UK. Oh so there's too much echo there. Can I carry on or is somebody asking any question? No, sir, carry on. Carry on. Okay. So when when I thought about it, I already spent three months in the house job. Okay. And when I applied, so what I did, I just sit down in the library for two months and uh, the pocket uh, medicine book, okay? In and out two or three times. And then I went for the flag one. And Alhamdulillah, I was passed, okay? The best thing for you guys, because you are in early stage of your career, especially the medical students. So you need to decide now that whether you want to give flag or whether you want to give USMLE, okay? And if you want to decide to give the flag or if you want to decide to give the USMLE, then I would recommend to start reading those books now, okay? Like for the USMLE, you have this USMLE 8, okay? And there are series of the books that, that come with that, the, with the series of the CDs as well, okay? So focus on that. I know my friends who are in my classmates, and then the initial stage, they were sure about it, they want to give USMLE and they want to go to the US. So the book that they read, they, all the books that they read is from the USMLE, they haven't read the book that they normally read for the anatomy, for the physiology, or for the other subjects. Even though they were unable to secure the highest marks in the class, but they were passing. But in the end, what they did, that we all went for the house job, and with the house job, they prepare for the exam, and during the house job is always a good period to give these exams, either it's PLEB or either it's a US Okay, Because at that time, everything is fresh in your mind. And you can give the exam and you can secure very good marks very, very easily. 
Okay, sir, thank I you have so a question. Um, uh, sir, I have hello? a question. Um, uh, uh, is it um, uh, is it uh, fine for uh, us to like give you a simile and the plab like, or are we supposed to choose just one? Um, it as I said, you need to tailor a program according to yourself. Okay, that what exactly you want. Okay, and um, when I was struggling here to get a number. Uh, so I took a step as well. And uh, during that time, I also cleared my USMLE as well. And uh, last year, Alhamdulillah, I have cleared all the steps of the USMLE. Okay. So these exams, they are always good. They can pay you at any stage of your life. Okay. So even with the plan, if you want to do the USMLE, and if you think that you can do it, then go ahead and do it. It always gives you an edge. It always gives you a plan B. Oh, right. Thank but, you so much. And uh, another question sorry. I had was uh, sir? that I uh, sir? that uh, will um, can, can you please give me a second? I'll just finish up my question really quickly. Um, so uh, if we give the USMLE, will will that give our CV an edge and uh, just give us an, a benefit as compared to others who've just given the PLAB and apply to the UK? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. I am Bushra Bosa, third year medical student from United Medical and Dental College. Sir, I have confusion between PLEB and MRCP. Uh, should I take MRCP2 after my graduation or PLEB is enough? As I searched about MRCP, it is a requirement for medical specialization. So, can you explain why it is a requirement? Please. The, you will say, like here in Pakistan, okay, when we start our postgraduate training, so we have to clear our uh, um, part one. Okay, so it is similar that they need you to give this middle grade exam. Okay, in surgery is called MRCS, and on the medical side is called MRCP. So once you finish your initial stage of your training, which is core medical training, then during those two years, you have to be clear your MRCP to become eligible to apply for your S degree in medicine. Okay. So MRCP itself is a degree. Okay. And PLEB is just a licensing exam. So there is no comparison between these two. PLEB, after giving the PLEB, you will be eligible to work in the UK, okay? And after giving the MRCP, you will be eligible to apply for the highest training there, which is the start from the ST3 training. Is it clear? Yes, sir, understood. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, sir, sir. Uh... Yeah. Sir, I want to ask if the number of research publications are important while you're applying for UK, because you initially talked about research. So is it just uh, okay if we do a few research papers or a few publications or the number of publications, like a lot of number of publications are important? You can imagine there is no limit to these. Okay? The more, the better. Okay, so aim for the higher number and come up with as much as you can. Okay. I have a strong portfolio of research here. At the moment, I am supervising one PhD student and two MD students. I've got multiple medical students who are working with me at the moment. So if any one of you have any problem or have got any idea about any research or any audit project, and you don't know how to execute that idea or how to transfer that idea from your brain to the paper, then I'm happy to help. I already shared my number with all you. So whenever you like, you can contact me through WhatsApp and whenever I free, uh, I will answer. Um, sir, one last question. Yes, Dr. Hina. Yes. 
um i just wanted to um, ask for the people here in pakistan who've been training here and who've done their fcps what do they do is this fcps of um, any value um how do they come to uk and how do they start off their jobs we very honest na itself having a degree of fcps or not having a degree of fcps is not going to give you any particular edge mm-hmm. okay and at your level if you want to come to the uk there is no point of doing the uh, training okay yeah uh, because first of all it's a long process you have to go through each a lot of things unnecessary things which is not yes. going to add anything to you okay so what i would recommend you that before you come here okay try to do your fellowship and try to speak to the people who are going to be your supervisor and you need to come up with a definite plan okay because most of the time the fellowship they ended up on the other side of the table okay which definitely you don't want okay yeah. so basically you want to come you want to operate you want to increase your numbers okay and here is very difficult to for the surgeons to let you do the thing okay because of restrictions okay yeah. if if pakistan we are lucky in a sense that we are less liable okay and that's the reason the consultant most of the time they give you easily for things to do okay but here it is more and more, more difficult because for example if you come and you doing the fellowship with me okay so if that patient die for any reason okay then it will come under my mortality okay yeah. which is monitored by a central body and if at any stage of my career if the mortality is go above the average mortality of other consultant in whole of the country then it will trigger a red flag there in the central body and they will ask an explanation for me yeah. okay they will come they will observe that how i am operating okay and i need to be scrutinized for that okay yeah. so that the reason here not everyone is willing to give their stuff very easily okay. okay because their gmc registration and their position is at fault um, so that the reason uh, i told you whenever you come for the fellowship you need to yeah. discuss that person mm-hmm. very very openly what you going to achieve when you come for the fellowship agreed thank you sir thank you, you for the take free feedback about that person from the others who are working in the hospital or from the person that you know so don't come blindly yes sir um thank you sir for the session okay hello um, hello yes so thank you um for the session uh, we'll conclude it over here uh, for further questions um they all noted down your uh, number and if we have any questions we'll contact you directly Thank you so very much everybody for being here. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. you. Have a nice day. Thank you sir. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz brother. Allah. Hafiz.